I am Narendra Naik from Mangalore in India. I am the president of Federation of Indian Rationalist Associations. I am a spokesperson of one of the pro-science movements, the rationalist movement. Our central mission is to make people think scientifically, rationally, and go according to the Constitution of India, which has got an Article 51AH, which says that it's the duty of every citizen to develop scientific temper, the spirit of inquiry, and humanism. But our movement has a unique place. That's why they want to get rid of us. There's a list of people whom they want to kill, and I am on that, and hence, I need to be guarded. We are fighting against the anti-science attitudes that exist in this country. For example, today, we are taking up the coronavirus pandemic. Scientific misinformation is being promoted by the government which is in power. We are taking up the claims of the various non-scientific people. For example, the astrologers, the puja people who do worship and rituals, people who claim quack remedies. In fact, there was a cow's urine party just a few days before the lockdown in which they were drinking cow's urine and saying that it will stop the coronavirus from infecting them. Initially, when the pandemic started, it was ignored. One of the cabinet ministers said that with all these millions of gods in this country, they'll all protect us against this coronavirus. Just yesterday, it was burning the camp. Week before that, it was banging pots and pans. And everybody said, oh, the coronavirus is killed by this. Brilliant manoeuvre by our clients. But nothing happened. The cases went on increasing. We have got another man who calls himself a Sadguru or a good guru. And he is the man who speaks up for the government. So when we have people like that, the religious leaders in top positions, unofficially advising the government, where does science go? It goes for a toss. The Anti-Black Magic Act is a small step in the direction to remove the superstitions from the society. They are all used to exploit the people. We are fighting against that. Separation of religion and state is the most important for the primacy of science in our public life. We are in for a disaster unless things change because we are a very crowded nation, particularly when you take the metropolitan cities. That's why I'm saying we are on a ticking time bomb. We are in for a disaster. That's all I can say. My name is Natalia Pasternak and I live in Sao Paulo, Brazil, where I run the first Brazilian Institute for the promotion of rational and scientific thinking. It's true that people are banging pots and pets at the windows every time that the president makes a statement as a way to protest. With regards to science, Brazilian government's response to the pandemic has been the worst possible. The government disregards all scientific evidence that the lockdown is necessary and there are no medications and we will not have a vaccine soon. So it's giving false information and false hope to people and people are starting to relax the lockdown because of the government and because of the president himself that goes out on the streets as if nothing was happening. It's impossible to build bridges with this government. It's the most anti-scientific government we ever had. The, uh, President Bolsonaro said that the pandemic, it's not a big deal and we should face it like men, not boys. He also said something very bizarre. He said that uh, Brazilians should be studied because they are immune to anything. They can go into the sewers and come out and skate. The public response to the pandemic is much better than the president's. And if we take the example of what's happening in the favelas, the drug lords organized the lockdown in the favelas. 
and they are doing a much better job than the federal government. I don't think most Brazilian government officials and even the medical community really understands what an approved medication means. We got a lot of the chloroquine hype here in Brazil and this happened because people don't understand how you test a drug and why do you need to test a drug to be sure that it's safe and it's effective and people rely on, on anecdotal evidence, on stories. The problem when public policies are based on ideology and anecdotes is that public policies are not based on science and this is not the best use of public money. I'm a microbiologist and I'm a research fellow at the University of Sao Paulo. Every decision that we make on our daily lives is based on what we know or what we don't know about science. So when people decide whether to vaccinate their children, they are using what they understand about science to make that decision. My job is to make that decision science-based. Vaccination campaigns in Brazil has always been a role model for the world until we got hit by the anti-vax movement. All of a sudden, our vaccination rate starts to drop. We are deeply worried about this anti-vax movement here. What gives me hope in the midst of the pandemic is that at last, I see people turning to science for solutions. People may come to realize that it's not possible to live in a world without vaccines, for instance. For the lack of one single vaccine, see what's happened to us. So this is my hope, that people, after the pandemic, they start to look on science as something that can help society and as something that is essential to the development of the country and to the well-being of every citizen in the world. Brazil and India are very similar in, in that both governments accept pseudoscience and alternative medicine. But when it comes to valuing and funding science, I think Brazil is doing much worse. I think the Indian government handles science, particular branches of science, better because they give some autonomy to some people. Yeah. I think the lessons that we can get from this pandemic is for the government to value science and to value science funding. Yes, because the government has now realized that quack medicines will not work. So they may be more scientific in the future. The pandemic brings us a very good opportunity to explain science better to the population. For instance, now everybody wants to understand how a clinical test is performed. Everybody wants to understand how a vaccine is made. Everybody wants to understand the difference between viruses and bacteria. So now it's the time to explain that because people are interested and we can take advantage of that. Explain to them what things are, what medicine is, what a virus is, what a vaccine is, and thereby educate the people so that they start thinking, they learn more. In fact, we have organized some uh, debating clubs uh, because of this shutdown. So we have taken young people and we have organized online debates. Every uh, week we have two to three of them. And that's how we get to the people now. There's no such thing as a quick fix now. We have to be patient and wait for science to come up with the answers. I think the pandemic could be a launching pad to restructure a very faulty healthcare system here, although we are very proud of the Brazilian healthcare system because we cater with a public healthcare system to 200 million people. We also rely on alternative medicine and maybe now it's time to restructure that because we all realize that alternative medicine doesn't work and we need real medicine. Because there are only two medicines, medicine that works and medicine that doesn't. So what doesn't work is called as alternative medicine and it has no place in any medical system. I would echo Narendra's words and say that uh, you know what they call alternative medicine that has been proved to work? Medicine. If some traditional knowledge proves to be efficient as a medication, it will be a medication. 
it will be institutionalized and it will be tested and it will go into the market. And at least we'll study, we'll know what dosage to use, we'll know what people can use it. So it's not about shunning traditional medicine or traditional knowledge out of the mainstream. It's about honoring these traditions enough to test them and to take them seriously. But after we test them, if they prove not to work, then it's proved not to work and we should abandon them and move on. I would look at it from a humanist angle. What we say is, well, you have your belief system, you stick to it. But when it comes to some issues, medical treatment, social policies, education system, stick to science, stick to evidence. So first we have to listen and then we talk. And when we talk, we, we, we can't come right as uh, we own the truth, we are the scientists, we know it all. No, we have to be patient and explain how science works and how we came to those conclusions and why they are important. And of course, as Narendra says, uh, respecting people's beliefs always. I don't think we disagree on much or anything at all. I wouldn't say we disagree over anything scientific. Maybe we disagree about food. I don't know. We'll have to talk no. about that. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Why? I would eat anything that uh, humans eat. Good. Because so do I. Uh, I think she is talking about me. <laughs> so we'll meet some time for dinner. <laughs> Lunch here in Brazil. Okay. All right. <laughs>